Hello, I'm Daniel Reed from the School of Mathematics at the University of Leeds, and I'm actually the admissions tutor in the School of Mathematics. So, so one question I often get asked as admissions tutor is, uh, what are the differences between uh, studying maths at university as compared to studying maths uh, at A-level? So I'm, I'm going to just spend a little bit of time uh, talking about that for you now. One of the things you'll definitely have to get used to when you make the transition from from A-level up to university, is, is just getting used to being in a, a large lecture theatre with a lot of students. You might find yourself in a room with maybe a hundred other students in there, uh, all sitting around trying to uh, take notes, and some poor person like me at the front just trying to explain uh, some mathematics to you. You might find that the, uh, the typical way that's done is, is through a sort of chalk and talk kind of method. So somebody will stand at the front, and they'll work through the mathematics on the whiteboard in front of you. Uh, this is the best way of, of learning mathematics at university because you get to see the process of how the mathematics is, is created uh, and, and somebody will explain what they're doing as they go along. It's far, far better than seeing a PowerPoint presentation where one equation comes up and then another equation comes up and so on. Typically, you'll find that during a lecture you won't uh, understand everything. You'll, you'll generally get a good set of notes, but you won't have understood everything. And so uh, you really need to go away then and work through the mathematics for yourself. Usually you'll get uh, a lot of uh, coursework to do uh, and you'll get lots of help with that with uh, small group tutorials and, uh, and sometimes things like peer assisted learning sessions and that sort of thing. So uh, through that you can just develop your mathematical maturity. Another question I get asked a lot is, is in terms of what sort of uh, subjects are you doing? Uh, is it going to feel like the same sort of subjects as you do at A-level, or is it going to feel like something different, or, or, or what? Uh, and the message is that some things will feel like a natural continuation of what you've been doing at A-level. Some things you might have seen before, other things will be completely new. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just going to work through a few examples on the board, uh, just to give you an idea of what might be the same, what might be different, and so on. Uh, so we'll start with one that might be the same. So uh, at A-level, you've been uh, doing uh, calculus. So let's write that word up there. Um, and in your calculus studies, you'll, you'll have been working out how to do things like calculate the gradient of a, a, of a line. So here we have a, a graph. Here we have a line. And in your calculus uh, work, you've been working out how to calculate things like the slope of that line. Well, uh, one thing you'll do fairly early on in most uh, mathematics courses at universities, you might start to think about, well, what happens if instead of this, which is just a function of one variable, say x, what happens if we generalize that uh, to more than one variable? So here's another variable, y. What does that do to our function? Well, instead of it being a straight line, you might find here that it actually gives you a surface. So now this is a function of two variables, which maps out a surface, like so. And so now, instead of trying to calculate the slope of a line, you're trying to work out how to do things like calculate the slope of a surface. And you'll have to develop new mathematical techniques and methods for dealing with that. And you'll learn about that sort of thing uh, in your first year. Uh, you might find in, in, in calculus of a function of one variable, you went away and you tried to work out things like maxima and minima. There are similar kind of objects to, to calculate here. For example, uh, hilltops would be a, a maximum, and a sort of valley bottom would be a minimum. But you might find that there are new things to, to calculate as well. So one example of that is what we call a saddle point. I'll try and sketch that for you now. Uh, so what a saddle point looks like is this. So as a, a function of two variables here, in this direction, it looks like it's a maximum if you go along that way. But in this direction, it looks like a minimum. So it's still what we call a stationary point, but it's a bit different from the maxima and minima you get for a function of one variable. So just to give you an example of something you might have seen before or you might not, uh, when you've been doing your A-level studies, uh, 
you, you might have taken a module in mechanics or you might have taken a module in statistics, uh, but we can't assume uh, that you've done that because some students take mechanics modules, some take statistics modules, some take decision math modules. So usually uh, the university will have to assume uh, that, that not all students have taken that and they have to teach it again from scratch. Uh, so if you've seen mechanics before, that's great. Uh, this will be uh, familiar to you a little bit. But you'll find that at university we tend to teach it from a slightly different angle, so that keeps your interest level up. So just to give a quick example of that, uh, at A-level, you might have learnt the equations for constant acceleration, things like S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared, or V is equal to U plus AT. Uh, when you get to university, we try to uh, avoid equations like th that, and we try to teach you things in, in, in a more general sense. So instead of thinking about constant acceleration, you might want to uh, think about what happens for a general acceleration. And then you have to start thinking, well, my, my velocity is what I get when I differentiate position with respect to T. And my acceleration is what I get when I differentiate my velocity with respect to t. And if you want to reverse that process, you need to integrate. So uh, my position I will get from integrating the velocity uh, with respect to t. And my uh, velocity I can get from integrating my acceleration with respect to t. And this gives you a much more general framework for dealing with motions of particles. It also leads to the links between mechanics and differential equations. Uh, often equations for motions of particles are written in terms of these derivatives and you have to solve a differential equation. You will find that there's some podcasts on that in, in, this, in this series.